Well, hello everybody. Doc Eon here with another video for you. This is the first video in a long while that hasn't or isn't going to be a standard Monday Minters Ramble. This is going to be something new. This is a video tour of my collection. This was actually suggested by one of my viewers a while back and I thought now was a good time to do it. And I'll explain why in a little moment. Um, there was also another suggestion for a video that I forgot what it is, was. Sorry about that. Uh, I, 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 um, I'll, I'll look through my old videos and see if I can find it. Anyway, what you're looking at here is some IKEA cabinets standing on an IKEA bookshelf laid on side. Uh, they're called, I forget what they're called, but they're with lighting inside. And uh, let's take a closer look at some of them, shall we? Now, on the top shelf of the first cabinet, we see a lot of Malifaux miniatures. In the front line here, the Eternal Champions I painted just a little while back, a few weeks ago. And yeah, that's what they look like. Uh, next shelf down are more mostly Malifaux miniatures and some other mixed stuff. And you'll notice this uh, shelf is a piece of wood. Why? Well, because two of my glass shelves broke and I spent over a year in, in contact with IKEA customer support. But the, they never managed to get me spare parts. It's like, it, it's not that they didn't want to, it's just that their production department weren't making any spare parts. So I eventually just tired of it and said, screw it, you know what, I'll make do with what I have. And going down to the next level, we have a very, very mixed bag of stuff. This is stuff that has no particular theme, so it didn't fit on any of the other themed shelves, essentially. And in the bottom here, we have stuff that is, well, all my Malifaux cards are taking up space there, and some terrain, which is specifically Malifaux terrain because it's, it's markers that are designed to have a specific footprint. And then there's some uh, markers for Frostgrave as well. And here in the bottom, we have books because I didn't want to put these, these things right straight on the ground because then this bottom shelf would be on the floor level and it would be really easy for dust to get into it. So I have some books here and uh, let me close this door. These are uh, these are art books on this shelf and art, 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 art. There's a lot of art and it transitions gradually here into miniatures rules. And I've got a couple of shelves of rule books for different mini games. Yeah, so they're sort of out of the way. Now the top shelf in this second cabinet the back is mostly wintry themed. It, it's all at the back. We see all the Christmas themed minis I've painted over the years, at during Christmas time, and in the front a few of the more, uh, shall we say, display quality models I've tried to paint, like this 54 millimeter thing from Andrea Miniatures, and a few of the hassle-free miniatures nudes, artistic nudes I should point out. Um, down here we have even more wintry stuff at the back. This is soldiers that I painted for Frostgrave. This is why they all have some snow on their bases. In the front some mixed characters, some statue scenery. And, and if we go to the next shelf, even more Frostgrave stuff. Uh, some of it is, well a lot of it is uh, specifically, I think these characters in the front are, no, no these characters in the, in the very front are the Winter Adventurers from uh, uh, Kickstarter. But behind them we have some characters that are uh, official Frostgrave minis. And down here 
We have my Kings of War collection from oh, a large portion of it anyway. Uh, the Undead, specifically, from Mantic Games. Uh, and a couple of... Oh, no, there's one Games Workshop mini there in the middle. Let's see if you can spot it. Uh, uh, but otherwise, this is all Mantic. The top shelf in the third case is mostly big things. That's a theme, uh, including some, some stuff in the back here, which has really large footprints, large bases, uh, like siege engines and vehicles and the like. And we have a big Jabberwock and uh, yeah, some bigger scale minis. Next one down is D&D focused. We have some uh, sea creatures in the back, which I painted for a specific D&D adventure. A lot of pirates continuing the nautical theme and uh, well some general you know player character or perhaps NPC adventure stuff. And continuing further down we have monsters 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 we have some a lot of um, Games Workshop dryads there some huge spiders a lot of reaper miniatures some heresy um, miniatures um, Huge wasps in the back. A Gale Force 9 be here, here in the front. And the bottom shelf here is uh, Warhammer stuff, Warhammer 40k stuff that I painted, not because I actually play it, but, but just to practice and because I thought they were cool. Now, and this brings me to the reason I said I want to film this now, because I need more space, so a lot of the minis I have in these cases that I'm not actually using at any time right now, because I don't play science fiction games currently, and I'm not really actively playing Malifaux either, so all the 40k and Malifaux stuff I think I'm going to box up and put my in my basement. Um, I'm going, I have some uh, carrying cases, some rather large carrying cases that I think, uh, I hope I can fit everything into, and I'll make some more room. So. <laughs> So it doesn't have to be this completely jam-packed. It will eventually become jam-packed again. Of course, the more I paint, but you know, some temporary relief. And here we have another cabinet. This one is also Ikea, but it's wooden. It's just an, a, a billy shelf with, with uh, these glass doors. Um, and this is mostly the first two shelves here are sort of pulp Cthulhu-esque style stuff, like 19th, 20th century stuff, early 20th century, and some monsters. And I'm sorry about the lighting here. There's no in installed lighting in these. Third shelf. Um, mixed fantasy stuff, monsters. Uh, some, a lot of old Ralpartha minis, some, some Reaper, um, some various modern Kickstarters, some Mantic stuff here, and, uh, some, some just general animals in the back there. Next down we go to even more undead. This is like mostly non-Mantic undead. We have a big Mantic demon here. We have some few really old miniatures, like Thread the Barbarian there, with this really strange paint scheme. And here is some just mixed stuff, uh, some demons, some elves, some undead, what have you. Next down we have even more, like, wargaming stuff. This is based for Kings of War, uh, not all of it is Mantic miniatures. Well, not much of it is. I think on, on this shelf, nothing here is actually by Mantic, but it's on their size of basis, uh, except for these skinks on Pteranodons here. And to keep this shelf stable, there's some heavy books at the bottom. To the left here, we have some painting guide. We have the fattest, most heavy, heaviest book I own, which is this illustrated Shakespeare edition. 
Uh, there's some more uh, art books and art and yeah, the rest of this is art books. Spread out around my living room are some of these bigger pieces. Like here, for example, on top of the TV, on top of the speaker, on top of the TV, I've put stuff like Cthulhu and this big green dragon and this bust of an orc, some sea monsters and the kraken. And down here, there's even more. And over on this, these shelves, we have here, we have Reaper bones, I think almost exclusive, not completely exclusively, but mostly Reaper bones, which... You know, I'm I'm not as careful about the bones, so I put them on this shelf that doesn't that isn't enclosed because uh, you know there's going to be some dust dust on them. But oh well. What can you do? And and have a second shelf here with even more bones stuff, characters, demons, and in the back actually is a lot of old. Um, Rob Powerthor and Grandier, true 25 millimeter miniatures uh, that I don't use that much because they're they're of a slightly different scale than modern mini miniatures. But I have painted them at some point and, and they're still sticking around there. And oh, here <laughs> in the window, what is this? Even more bones and a lot of well, there's bones and there's some pre-painted stuff from when I used to buy. The, the official D&D pre-painted miniatures. I still have a lot of those, and I use them for, for sort of riffraff for minions uh, in, in role-playing scenarios because, you know, it's I've, I've, like I've got these half a dozen troglodytes, and, you know, saves me from having to go, go and buy out, go out and buy and paint some new troglodyte miniatures because just because I need some trogs. But I have painted some new orcs here. Here's a clip. You see the mix. This is some relatively newly painted bones orcs, and in the back here we have some old pre-painted orcs. Oh, and behind them even more new orcs. Oh well. But yeah, and um, oh, and I should perhaps show you. I have over here in these plastic containers. I have keep terrain, and I keep even more of the old pre-painted stuff just tossed in here randomly well not randomly these are grouped by type so in this box we have undead and constructs i believe yeah and it's you know they i i pull them out sometimes just for to play with to, for gaming i mean <laughs> But anyway, that was my collection, such as it is. Um, it's not my collection of unpainted stuff. I mean, bringing all that out would would that be a huge video? And I know I'm not going to do that. Don't even ask. It's just oof, painful. Um, but I hope somebody had some enjoyment out of that. It was useful, interesting somehow. Uh, I'll be back on Monday with another of my standard videos. Until then, click like, comment, subscribe, share, and I'll be back. Bakia, signing out.